with me, Dad. Okay, honey. Curious George. This is George. He lived in Africa. He was a good little monkey, and always very curious. One day, George saw a man. He had on a large yellow straw hat. The man saw George too. What a nice little monkey! He thought. I would like to take him home with me. He put his hat on the ground, and of course George was curious. He came down from the tree to look at the large yellow hat. The hat had been on the man's head. George thought it would be nice to have it on his own head. He picked it up and put it on. The hat covered George's head. He couldn't see. The man picked him up quickly and popped him into a bag. George was caught. The man with the big yellow hat put George into a little boat, and a sailor rowed them both across the water to a big ship. George was sad, but he was still a little curious. On the big ship, things began to happen. The man took off the bag. George sat on a little stool, and the man said, "George, I am going to take you to a big zoo in a big city. You will like it there. Now run along and play, but don't get into trouble." George promised to be good, but it is easy for little monkeys to forget. On the deck, he found some seagulls. He wondered how they could fly. He was very curious. Finally, he had to try. It looked easy, but, oh, what happened? First this, and then this. Where is George? The sailors looked and looked. At last, they saw him struggling in the water and almost all tired out. Man overboard! The sailors cried as they threw him a life belt. George caught it and held on. At last, he was safe on board. After that, George was more careful to be a good monkey until at last the long trip was over. George said goodbye to the kind sailors. And he and the man with the yellow hat walked off the ship onto the shore and on into the city to the man's house. After a good meal and a good pipe, George felt very tired. He crawled into bed and fell asleep at once. The next morning, the man telephoned the zoo. George watched him. He was fascinated. Then the man went away. George was curious. He wanted to telephone too. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. What fun! Dingalingaling. George had telephoned the fire station. The firemen rushed to the telephone. "Hello, hello," they said, but there was no answer. Then they looked for the signal on the big map that showed where the telephone call had come from. They didn't know it was George. They thought it was a real fire. "Hurry, hurry, hurry!" The firemen jumped onto the fire engines and onto the hook and ladders. Ding dong, ding dong! Everyone out of the way! Hurry, hurry, hurry! The firemen rushed into the house. They opened the door. No fire! Only a naughty little monkey! Oh, catch him! Catch him! They cried. George tried to run away. He almost did. But he got caught in the telephone wire, and a thin fireman caught one arm, and a fat fireman caught the other. 
You fooled the fire department, they said. We will have to shut you up where you can't do any more harm. They took him away and shut him in a prison. George wanted to get out. He climbed up to the window to try the bars. Just then the watchman came in. He got on the wooden bed to catch George, but he was too big and heavy. The bed tipped. The watchman fell over, and quick as lightning, George ran out through the open door. He hurried through the building and out onto the roof. And then he was lucky to be a monkey. Out he walked onto the telephone wires. Quickly and quietly, over the guard's head, George walked away. He was free. Down in the street, outside the prison wall, stood a balloon man. A little girl bought a balloon for her brother. George watched. He was curious again. He felt he must have a bright red balloon. He reached over and tried to help himself, but... Instead of one balloon, the whole bunch broke loose. In an instant, the wind whisked them all away, and with them went George, holding tight with both hands. Up, up he sailed, higher and higher, the houses looked like toy houses, and the people like dolls. George was frightened. He held on very tight. At first the wind blew in great gusts. Then it quieted. Finally it stopped blowing altogether. George was very tired. Down, down he went, bump, onto the top of a traffic light. Everyone was surprised. The traffic got all mixed up. George didn't know what to do, and then he heard someone call, George! He looked down and saw his friend, the man with the big yellow hat. George was very happy. The man was happy too. George slid down the post, and the man with the big yellow hat put him under his arm. Then he paid the balloon man for all the balloons, and then George and the man climbed into the car. And at last, away they went to the zoo. What a nice place for George to live. The End Thank you, Dad. You're welcome, sweetheart. You want to pick another one?